Oh, and welcome back to Source Studios. And if you haven't been living under a rock for the last two years, no way. Hey, Rick, check this out. Here's this amazing thing called the 501st Battle Pack. Yes, this was released August 1st, I think, two years ago in 2020. I probably should have fact-checked all this stuff. I'm just going off of memory. Yes, it was in fact two years ago in the August release. Anyway, so this set retailed for 30 bucks. First ever 501st Battle Pack need I just say, and the second rendition of 501st Troopers we had ever gotten, the first rendition we got was in the original ATRT Walker, the 501st ATRT Walker, sorry, and the Z95 Headhunter, where we also got a 501st Pilot, but we finally got a 501st Battle Pack, and what did that mean? Well, first, there was the first $30 LEGO Battle Pack, but to be fair, six minifigures 285 pieces that's a great price per piece and that's a great minifig ratio to the price honestly like walmart they're like the true heroes when it comes to this set because for as long as i remember practically since the release day not literally the release day but probably honestly like a good three months after or whatnot or six months or however you want to say it this set has been selling at walmart for a solid 24 dollars ever practically ever since six months after the release. So if you want one, you can literally go to Walmart, get it for $6 off. It's been like that. I don't know why it's been like that, but a, an amazing battle pack like this for 24 bucks each is like a great deal. And you should just, you should hop on that deal. Set came with a 501st Bark Speeder and a 501st ATRT Walker. Set came with two B1 battle droids classic just regular b1 battle droids but it also came with three newly designed 501st troopers new helmets uh the white arms the white belt not the black belts uh with guns and dc rifles with an additional lego piece added on to make them even longer which i believe this set was the first one they did and then we also got a 501st jetpack trooper uh designed after the battlefront 501st trooper now why is this set the most amazing lego set probably in the history of lego sets it's because it has pioneered something that is magnificent in a good way and a bad way here's the thing ever since lego made this battle pack this 30 dollar battle pack uh this was sort of pushing the way pioneering the way for a little bit more expensive battle packs we got the snow trooper battle pack this is the first 20 dollar battle pack that we're getting and we're getting a future $20 battle pack in January, which I'm very excited. Everyone's going to be getting that set, let me tell you that much right now. Battle pack price of $15 has been replaced by the three minifigure, three minifig pack, sort of, whatever it's called, the Clone Trooper Command Station and the uh, Defensive Hoth that has been sort of like the placeholder for the $15, which is, you know, prices are just going up and inflation and all that stuff. <laughs> Anyway, we see that we have the Snow Trooper Battle Pack, classic for minifigs with 105 pieces, pretty standard for a battle pack piece count. But in the 501st Battle Pack, we have 285 pieces. And of course, you, most of the time when you get battle packs, they're usually just a one and done thing. Usually they don't have any pairs or anything. Now, if you look back to the OG Clone Trooper Battle Pack, the Phase 2 Clone Trooper Battle Pack, which included a Shock Trooper, a 212th core trooper i believe it wasn't two, i think it was supposed to be 212th not sure yellow designs uh and then you had two regular phase two troopers which that battle pack was awesome because it came with a you came with a shock trooper and you can't really get shock troopers a lot anymore so that was great but it also came with a pair battle battle pack um that you were supposed to pair it up with which was a droid battle pack which came with a it came with at least i think two super battle droids and like six v1 battle droids it was a really great battle pack. Probably came with more droids, honestly. I can't really remember. I think it came with a staff as well. But you were meant to buy both of those and like pin them against each other. Those were to, meant to build your clone and your droid army. They also had some other battle packs that you could have pinned against each other, like the OG Clone Wars Clone Trooper battle pack with the 
uh, two regular clone troopers, the one clone commander and the clone gunner, Scott Walker, also paired with the assassin droids battle pack, which I thought was a very interesting choice. They were like all IG-88 style droids in that set, which was a unique design. Then we started to get battle packs where they were versus battle packs. For example, we had the clone troopers versus droideka battle pack. We had the uh, Arf Trooper and Elite uh, Clone Commander versus the uh, Commando Droids Battle Pack. We also had the Old Republic Troopers versus Sith Troopers Battle Pack. So we got we started to get a lot more battle packs where the four minifigs were not on one side. It was a split two and two. This battle pack kind of just did it all. It, it felt it went back to the nostalgia, but also went on with the n newer traditions of battle packs, being that they're included both sides, the clones and the separatists, or whatever have you. But it also went back to the having four minifigs of the same side, which we had seen that before with like the Sith Troopers or the Praetorian Guards or whatnot, you know, they were all on the same team. But we have a clone one. We have a clone one, four clones, two droids. And now Lego is doing something very interesting where we are getting a $20 battle pack, but it is meant to be an extension army builder off of the 501st battle pack. Why is this amazing? Because Lego, I think, has finally realized that this, this set right here has been a really big seller. Like, people have bought so many. I know so many of my friends who don't even do Lego YouTube. Like, they just love this set and have like 10 or 20 or 30 of them, like just a crap ton of them, even though it's $30 or $24 if you buy it at Walmart. But still, even though $30 set, it's just still so amazing how much of these have been bought. So Lego obviously knows, okay, people still like to build clone armies, even though the Clone Wars is over, that era is over, Disney is definitely focusing on original trilogy and sequel stuff and past that. Obviously, I, we're not really going back to any prequel stuff that, that at least I can think of because um, Kenobi was in the OG timeline. Technically, Kenobi was a prequel because it was before episode four, but I kind of just consider anything that's after Order 66 OG timeline. Like Rogue One just feels OG. I know it technically is a prequel, but that's just how I see it in my head. Andor show, technically prequel as well, but it's, it's in that weird middle. Disney's doing a lot of stuff in that, like, between episode 3 and episode 4 at timeline. I mean, they did an entire TV show, Rebels. The Bad Bat show, right on the cusp of that, really. And then we have The Mandalorian, we're getting a third season, we're getting a second season of Book of Boba Fett, getting an Ahsoka show, uh, and we're just getting so much stuff. So, even though we are past Clone Wars stuff for just for now, for now, I think Lego still sees that because... Everyone who grew up with the Clone Wars as kids now are adults and now we have money and now it's like, oh boy, here comes the nostalgia, like, here we go. I wouldn't be surprised if 10 years from now we started to see some sequel sets come back because then the when, when the sequel movies came out, those kids would then be adults and they'd have money to buy Lego sets. So now, right, but right now, it's the Clone Wars generation that has the money now and we want Lego sets. Now Lego is taking army building to a whole, whole nother level where the 501st Battle Pack extension, the $20 one coming out in January, will have four minifigs, but there will be two heavy 501st minifigures and uh, one 501st commander and one sniper, which um, I described in my sort of speculation analysis review of the 2023 Lego like, Star Wars Humors video that you should check out. I already d talked about that they will probably design it off of Battlefront because Lego designed the 501st Jetpack Trooper off of the Battlefront one. We'll probably get a sniper. I hope, well, okay, here's the thing. As I said in the video, we're probably gonna get 501st Troopers, but they're gonna have holes in their helmets now, uh, just like the 212 Troopers and the ATT Walker. We are going to get different ones. So if you want to get uh, Fire Force Troopers without the holes, you should buy some more of these battle packs before this set retires forever. We're probably going to get holes because there's going to be ex there's going to be a need for accessories on these troopers. For example, the heavy trooper. Uh, no, actually, that's a bad example. Let's start with the sniper trooper first. Sniper trooper has that like 
uh, radar, not radar, but like, uh, oh gosh, like the binoculars that come down. And LEGO's never made one of those. I mean, there's plenty of custom people that make those accessories for their clones. LEGO's never made one of those before, but there's always a, hey, you know what? Uh, there's always a first time for everything. So I wouldn't be surprised if LEGO made a mold for that specifically for the Sniper 501st Trooper. Now, we also have a clone commander, which I think to, to be completely honest, I think LEGO's just gonna give us like a standard 501st uh, clone trooper. However, add the holes in the helmet, give him a blue visor, like how Commander Cody Phase 2 has an orange visor. They would make some blue visors, maybe give them different guns, maybe give them a little lapels at the bottom to put on the legs. And that's really it. That's really all I see them doing. Maybe change up the printing just a tiny bit but I see them sort of just doing that, just like the OG Clone Wars battle pack where the clone commander was just a regular phase one clone, just with the crap turn of accessories. Like you could just make him a regular if you wanted to. Now the heavy is interesting because the heavy in Battlefront looks like this. And I don't know if like is actually gonna do that. Um, if you see some of like the heavy clones, I don't know, I think it'd be cool. We got some like clone prints, like callbacks from the Clone Wars, because you had like Hardcase, um, who was definitely a heavy expert, or he loved the chain gun. He loved the um, the ro ro rotary gun, or whatever the heck you call it. That was like his weapon. It would be cool to see like some like Republic printing to distinguish them or something like that. I think that would be really cool. I also think it'd be cool if Lego actually gave us a chain gun mold, like not a brick built one, but just straight up gave us a chain gun mold because the brick built ones, you can barely have both hands on it. Mold you can, and so many other custom Lego minifigure websites have done that, and they feel like it's about time for Lego to step up their game with their with their guns and weapons and stuff and just give us some better weapons for the clones. Overall, uh, this is gonna be an amazing, an amazing uh, clone builder because you're getting we're getting three new types of clones for your army, uh, for your squad, even if you wanted to make a squad. And we have a plenty amount of these guys right here for us to get. Now, here's the thing. I believe this set retires at the end of this year. I want to say this set retires at the end of this year. I don't know, maybe like we'll push it back with the whole uh, expansion battle pack coming out. But if this set does expire at the end of this year, you're gonna wanna get a crap ton of these before they're gone because this is gonna, I don't know when the next time we're gonna get a chance to get as many Bible First Troopers as we can right now. And these are really good quality Bible First Troopers. Like they look really good. Honestly, I'm looking at my Bible First Troopers I have right here and I'm thinking like, okay, I need to buy a couple more uh, before these go away because if I'm gonna have an army, if I'm ever gonna have a mock uh, Bible First Troopers, I'm gonna want some more regs and you know, I'm not counting the jetpack troopers. Those are cool, but like, you know, they're very specific. So if I want more regs, I get three per like pack um, or box or set or whatnot. So probably I'm gonna get a couple more. Uh, maybe if I'm lucky, they'll even go more on sale by the time they're almost ready to retire, which I could see Walmart and Target dropping them to like 20 bucks, which would be freaking amazing. So there we are. Anyway, that's why I think the Fowler's bow back. It's probably the best Lego set ever, and it's pioneering the way for different types of army builds that we haven't even seen before. Uh, expansion battle packs that can totally continue in the future. Uh, if more battle packs make sense, uh, Lego can just keep on doing that whole method and make some more um, battle pack expansions to other battle packs that we might love in the future. Or just take those same clone molds and turn them into like 212s or anything of this, literally any legion. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, everyone, of my thoughts. And uh, please like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Click the bell icon, join the Discord server, all that stuff. Um, this is Story Studios. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.